and welcome to another vlog. I hope you will enjoy this week. I am struggling a lot, which you seem to enjoy usually. There is a lot of failing and a lot of uh, silent swearing, maybe even some loud swearing. I mean, painting, making stickers and failing uh, big time. And I'm also continuing in um, making my studio cute and beautiful. So there is some more furniture redoing. And uh, just for the little accountability and uh, stuff, I want to show you the gallery wall from last week because it's no more. <laughs> so, wait, let me go. So this is what we have left. Unfortunately, uh, it all fell down. The wall is just insane and I didn't really have nerves to try to um, nail it back. So. This is some honesty and authenticity there. These are still staying up, very good job. The rest, not so much. So <laughs> that's something I will have to do soon anyway, but maybe I have to figure out a better way. Anyway, uh, I hope you enjoy everything and I will shut up now and let you watch whatever I'm going to do next. <laughs> Hi friends, it's the next day, which is Friday and I'm gonna continue painting what I started yesterday so I'm gonna show you <laughs> oh, it really makes me laugh so I painted uh, these potatoes sweet peas and the cucumber because this uh, month patreon theme is uh, from the garden <laughs> And I got all these really silly ideas with different vegetables and I decided to try something new. So I'm painting them somehow realistically with the watercolor. I mean, I'm quite impressed uh, with this one, to be honest. It's, uh, it's okay. <laughs> but then I'm gonna uh, scan them, get them into the computer and I'm gonna paint really silly faces on them. Or, some kind of features and expressions and I think it's gonna be really funny with like a very plain uh, colorful background and then the faces and the realistic vegetable itself uh, and it's going to be for stickers for um, July Patreon rewards and for the print I don't know yet about the print maybe the potato I will see I <laughs> I think the potato is really funny with the sprouts, which kind of looks like pink hair. I don't know. I think it's funny. So <laughs> what I have to paint or what I want to paint today is different tomatoes because I got this other <laughs> really stupid idea about you know when people say tomato tomato so i want to make the whole sticker sheet just with tomatoes and there will be different tomatoes like san marzano and beef tomato and cherry tomato and just basic tomato and they have different shapes and sizes and they will have also different features so like san marzano sounds very fancy so it will be maybe like a lady with a hat and so on <laughs> And these ideas are so stupid, but it's just cracking me up. So I'm gonna just do it. So that's the plan for now. I'm gonna paint uh, several more vegetables and fruits and I can film a little bit of that. Uh, and then I will see what's gonna be next. I really never know, so I can't, can't really promise anything. Oh, and I have to show you, I have these new earrings. I hope you can... there. I got them from Joanna Clay. I know I mentioned her several times, but she's amazing. I'm her patron and I won the competition and she sent me these as a reward. And they make me so happy and they're so absolutely beautiful clay. Let me go close. Look at it. Amazing. So I just said makes me very happy that I'm all kind of pink and coordinated and yeah. So I'm gonna get to the painting now. I'm gonna take the camera down so you can see what I'm doing and then I will be back when I'm back. <laughs>
different, so it's the next day. And it turns out I got completely mad into drawing and painting vegetables. So let me show you what I did so far. So far we've got these. Oh, I love the potatoes, some peas pickle. This is patisson or patty pan squash, which is kind of a shape like an alien saucer, I think. And the different tomatoes. So we have a beef tomato. We have San Marzano. Ooh, San Marzano. We have cherry tomato, and we have a slice. And then <laughs> I went to the garden and picked some more pickles and painted some more. And then I got completely mad. So now I'm painting pink, pink pickle and blue peas and. I, I don't know, it's just for the longest time I had this idea about why why would we paint things the way they look like outside? Like that's what photos are for, right? I mean, it's a really amazing skill to have to paint realistic uh, things, but then that's what we invented cameras for, no? So. <laughs> What I really want to try to do is to paint things I can't see outside or I can't take photographs of. So, and I had this idea of this pink pickle for months now. I don't know why, I just don't like green. I don't really like to paint with green. I mean, this green is kind of nice, this one. But it's not, I, I don't like it. I'm very color sensitive, if you will, so just like sp very specific colors. And uh, then I was like, you know what? Screw it. I'm gonna just try to paint them in the colors I like. And maybe someone will appreciate it. And if not, I don't care because I'm gonna make this pink pickle sticker and I will probably make it with like a glitter background so it will be completely mental. I, I shouldn't say that, but you know, completely wild <laughs> and uh, I will love it and I can make 30 of them and maybe I will, you know, maybe someone will like it. I don't know when I'm get where I'm getting with this, but uh, anyway, essentially I have this idea. Okay, let me put the camera down because I can't hold it any longer and I can tell you this story, okay? So. When I was younger, I had this theory that what if we as a people see different colors? So hear me out, I know it's nonsense, but that's what I was thinking. So when we are born, we are born, right? We get eyes and we see, most of us are fortunate to see, and most of the, those people are fortunate to see colors. But then how do we know we see the same thing, right? It, it, it was hypothesis some years ago, okay? So this idea in my head was, and maybe that's in the parallel universe where the light and colors work in a different way. Anyway, so the idea was that we are taught which things have which color, right? So you go out with your parents and they're like, and the sky is blue and the grass is green and the whatever, right? Strawberries are red, violets are blue or violet. And that's how we know. So that any time we see something in a similar color, we know, oh, it is green, right? But what if our, our brains get messed up? So even though we know how the, you know, the, the, the light works and the colors happen, um, maybe we see different colors because the brain receptors or the eye sees it in a different way. So I could have learned when I was little that the grass is green, so I know the name of the color is green, but maybe I see it pink. Does it make any sense to any of you? It makes a lot of sense in my head. And somehow that idea is really stuck in my head for years and I can't leave it. And it kind of wanna makes me wanna paint things in weird colors. So still sort of realistic, but what if everything green would be pink? Imagine that. Imagine that everything in the nature would be pink instead of green. Wouldn't that be amazing? I think so. Anyway, so 
I think I just have to go with it and I will just try to paint stupid silly things because it makes me immensely happy and I think that's what the art should be about and especially hobbies. You might know I have a full-time job commercial manager in a corporation by the day, artist by night. How poetic. Anyway, and then I'm like, yeah, okay, I love painting, maybe one day this could be my job, but then in case for it to be worth it, I need to paint something which I loved so much that I just can't stop, right? Because if, if I just paint it, nah, maybe people will like it, whatever, uh, trendy, la la la. And I might as well keep my job, right? So I think I just, I will just go with it and I'll see what happens. And I had this idea about people and painting people as well, but I don't know if that wouldn't be disrespectful somehow. If like I paint blue and green and pink people, would people think I'm racist and I'm making fun of color. I don't know. I, I'm a bit careful there. But I would love to try that as well because I think it's super fun and I really love, since I did the Joanna's uh, uh, challenge to paint one picture with one color only, I really really enjoy that. It really simplifies the process in my brain to not overthink it. So I just take one color and I use different, what is it, values of it? I don't know the language saturation so I, I, I water it down a lot to make the lighter shade and then full-on color for the, the shadows and it's just really fun and I think things look really cool anyway I've been talking for so many minutes about my nonsensical hypothesis about colors but let me know what you think about it because I think it's I think I still think it's possible I mean our brains are so complex and in the same time so messed up so why couldn't that be the case? Anyway, so point being, don't love green. Let's see what happens. Let's finish this pink pickle and blue peas. And I think I'm going to paint lilac tomatoes, which exist in the nature, so it's not even weird. And then what I want to paint is rainbow corn. It's a real thing. I'll try to insert pictures here. And it's so beautiful. I think it's called something like the rainbow glass corn or something and it's the most beautiful thing. So I'm gonna paint that. It's gonna take me hours because every seed has to be different shade of color but I think it's gonna be amazing. So I'll go back to the painting and I will show you the result once I'm done. <laughs>
so it's several hours later <laughs> and I finished I think painting all the vegetables now I need it for all the products or rewards for the patreon and I love it <laughs> so I thought I'm gonna show you you already saw the potatoes I had to chop it up because I'm idiot and I paint on a3 a sheet even though I don't have a3 scanner and then I don't paint it exactly in the middle so I have to chop it up in small slices but we have the potatoes we have the patty pan squash or patty song. Then we already saw, I think, the pickle and the peas. And then uh, we have the tomato family. <laughs> and then I painted two more pickles, the, the green ones, because I want to make kind of like a pickle washi tape because I think it's so stupid that it's actually hilarious. And then I painted my dream pink pickle, which I absolutely love. <laughs> and then I went bonkers and painted blue peas. I think they look really cool. Look, green, blue. Why not? Very, very nice. And then, my friends, I thought, what else is there in these really nice blue and pink colors? And then I remembered this amazing, I think it's called gemstone. Stone, let me see, gemstone corn or heirloom corn. Hmm, let me see, just a second. It's called glass gem corn, and they are like this is how they look like. Okay, um, I will insert some picture. This is nonsense. I will show you, and it's just magic. And I and they're actually real corn, and I really would love to grow them one day or I have one. So I painted the corn, and I love it. It looks so pretty, and it's just amazing. And then I painted the aubergine and the purple tomato. So we have five friends into this bit crazy family and then the other ones are like a normal vegetables <laughs> but the corn come on you have to love the corn I love the corn <laughs> so now what I think I'm gonna do is to I have to scan everything in the scanner and clean up uh, the paintings which means I have to remove all the background and then I'll decide what to do with it I got uh, this um, Stick a paper which is like washi tape material so you can make washi tape stickers so I'm thinking I'm gonna make washi tape washi tape stickers <laughs> so they will be like a, 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 not slices stripes stripes of washi tape so on one sheet you maybe get five or six stripes of different washi tapes with different vegetables I think that will be really fun so that will be probably for the patron and then I want to make one big uh, sparkly uh, cucumber pickle and I definitely want to make big sticker from this because this is so cool I want to have it and then I'll see I was thinking about making like cool cute cards with the potatoes like a potato potato and then also tomato tomato <laughs> I know, stupid, but uh, genius, no? Uh, so I will scan it and I will see how it looks like. And if I feel like it, I'm going to paint faces on them or just leave them as they are. I'll see. So I'm going to scan and do all this editing now. I think it's a bit boring to watch. And if you want to see how I do that, you can see, I think, two videos before when I was editing the octopus. That was exactly the same way. Or if you are interested in really knowing how to do it, I can film a little tutorial, so let me know. But I'm gonna scan everything very boring, edit everything very boring, and then if I create something, I'm gonna show you later, probably tomorrow. So let's see. <laughs> Hi friends, it's the next day and I finally finished cleaning up all the paintings. So I have them here in the computer now. There it is, in the different files. And what I'm gonna try to do now is to turn them into washi tape stickers. So I got this paper. I only got, the thing is, I only got five sheets because I wanna try what my printer can or can't do. And I really love the washi tape material. Let me show you. 
so it's kind of I don't know if you will see the texture but it's sort of very thin see there <laughs> it's very thin material and um, it's uh, on the paper, it's uh, biodegradable everything and it has this really lovely texture, like a washi tape really. Uh, so I thought I'm gonna try to print out kind of slices of washi tape and I'm gonna make tiny sticker sheets for my patrons with the different uh, short uh, washi tape pieces. Because even though it's not on the roll, you can still use it for journaling or for even closing envelopes and stuff like that. So I think it's still good enough <laughs> and it can be really cool but i have no idea what my printer is gonna do because so far if i print it on um kind of not the really photographic paper it soaks a lot in the material and it's a mess it doesn't look sharp sometimes it doesn't matter because it gives it this little vintagey vibe if the material is right but we have to try it out however i have Four, eight. I think I have 11 sticker patrons and I have five sheets by four so I have sheets enough for 20 sticker sheets and I have to make 12 so I kind of have two to test it out and if it doesn't work I'm going to just uh, do it on a normal sticker paper I think it will still be cool a different type of sticker but I think this would be magnificent so I'm with, uh, and then I'm gonna do other things with the vegetables for the printed patron rewards and I'm gonna make one large sticker as well but so what I did now I will show you my screen better and I'm gonna show you there so just give me a sec all right let's hope you see anything so here are the vegetables and you can see I cleaned up the lines so it's all clean and there is no background and it's all deleted which is great uh, and now I made this empty file here um, where I uh, prepare these lines because I'm gonna be uh, cutting it out on the sticker machine and I'm not quite sure how it does uh, with the no border cutting yet so I created this two millimeters margin here, like an offset, and then in between is one and a half centimeters uh, for the for the tape. So there will be kind of six different stripes of tape. I just placed different colors, even though I kind of like the pastels, but we will see. And then millimeter in between, and there will be some blah 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 on the bottom. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna try to play with the layout. I already know I want to definitely make one with the tomato so what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to copy the tomato Let's see. I'm using the lasso or I'm gonna try it's now set to catch up to the um, grid so it's a bit stupid and then <laughs> it's a bit too big I think <laughs> the slice um, so we need to definitely make it smaller, maybe like um, 300 pixels, Man, that's better, even smaller, no, there, and then I was thinking because the tomato kind of looks like a um, dot, so I'm going to make one, st uh, one tape, uh, slice with kind of just like dots let's see how it's gonna look like uh, but the so for when it's gonna be really tiny you won't really see but if you look closer maybe I'll make some like here so you see it's gonna be like a half tomato I think that can be really hilarious let me show you closer because if you see closer it's like a slice of tomato but if you would see it from the distance so it's like one and a half centimeters it just looks like red dots which I think is hilarious and then we have other vegetables like the peas and the pickles so I'm gonna make uh, 
some pickle uh, tape and stuff like that and I will show you in a second when I finish all the designs because I think it's quite boring to just look at the screen. So let me work on that and I will come back in a minute or like 60 minutes. <laughs> Okay friends, it's not actually that much later and I think I finished the design, so let me show you. I think it's hilarious. Uh, yeah. So we have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six different designs. Uh, we have, uh, let me show, turn off the grid, there you go. So we have tomatoes. We have, let me go even close, yeah. We have magical vegetables in unrealistic colors. We have tomato dots. <laughs> we have, I don't know what's happening. We have magical corn. And we have pickles. And I love it. So I'm going to now make a little heading here. And we are going to try to print it out. Because <laughs> I think this is so much fun. And for example, these corns. I made them bigger because then if you want you can just cut it like that into three little washi pieces and use it as separate stickers. Same for these, you can kind of cut it and use it as a separate stickers and these are a bit more a regular tape but I really love this one, magical vegetable. I love them all. This one is so cute with all the twirly twirl thing tails the pickles have. So, Let's try to make the heading. I will send it into Silhouette Studio and try to print it out and we will hope for the best. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I prepared the file and I'm gonna send it to print so we will see first how it looks like and then I will cut it and we will see how that goes. It's a test I can already see I could have done it bigger and probably the offset is also unnecessarily big because if I make the offset only one millimeter I might be able to fit one more stripe of the tape onto the sticker sheet. So let's just do this test and see what happens. Well, <laughs> it's not very bright, is it? <laughs> I mean, it's cute, but where did the colors go? I don't know. Um, uh, honestly, I don't know. I will try to print out one more, um, but I think I will edit it first. So I fix the cut lines and everything. So we can fit one more stripe on the sheet and I will see, it's a bit like, hmm, definitely something's going on here because uh, you can maybe see it here, no, it's probably, it kind of has like a frame, can you see here around, it's really strange, it's like the whole PDF got printed kind of off-white which makes no sense because uh, it's transparent background so it's like it's really really weird so I'm gonna try to edit it again and we will hope for the I have one more attempt uh, and then I will just see what happens I mean I, I will still use it I can seal the envelopes with it it's just very 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 pastel I mean for the corns it's kind of okay because they look really cute in the pastel colors, but it's not really what I painted. So we will try to fix that. I'll be back in some minutes, hopefully with better result. <laughs> okay, so I redid the file. Now I added a kind of a gradient in the back instead of uh, the stripes. And I kind of organized the vegetables based on the color. And I made it in a bit bigger resolution, so I'm going to print it out again and hope it's gonna work. Because this is so cute, I just want it to work. You know I get really annoyed when people sell things for inkjet home printer, and then this is what you get. So this was the first attempt. It's quite 
sharp-ish, but the colors were very, very pale. So then I tried again. Colors are much better. But look what the paper does. The ink just... Ugh. This is just so sad because it, this could be so cute, but I, I don't know how else to set the printer. I think I'll try one more time with one more setting. And if that's not gonna work, then I don't know. I think then if it's not gonna work, I will just print out this gradient and just cut it up as like a different colored stripes and use it because if it's a, you know if it's just a plain color it prints quite okay but it's just it's just sad like once i figure this shit out i'm gonna definitely make a big youtube video about how to deal with technology when you're an artist because i think i'm quite tech savvy compared to a lot of my friends but this this is another level. <sighs> okay, let's try one more setting and then we decide what to do. Yeah, no, still shit. <laughs> Look at that. Anyway, so I have one, one more, uh, one type, one other type of paper from this seller, uh, which is also kind of a, it's a vellum type of paper. So I'll try it on that, and let's see what happens. Otherwise, I will just print this out on regular sticker paper. I think it will still be very, very cute. So let's do that. Okay, friends, struggle. It's real and I feel like I'm just flushing my money down the toilet. But anyway, this was the first attempt. Not great. Then two more. Uh, not great. Then the other paper. Also horrible. Look at the tomatoes. This one is okay. Like what is this even? <laughs> and this. And then I started to think, oh my god, maybe it might printer is broken so I printed it on the matte stick of vinyl paper but that is completely fine like look at the level of detail and everything it's just fantastic so it's definitely shit uh, printer paper which probably is not even made for printing really and someone is just selling it so unfortunately won't be five star review but I'm gonna message them first because I'm not an asshole uh, but this looks really really cute so I'm going to just print it on this paper and I'm gonna make one bonus sticker sheet with just big vegetables so my patrons are happy I hope this will still be cute I don't know I tried my best and I guess that's what matters but this corn this corn is one of my best work so far I mean I'm obsessed okay <laughs> uh, all right let's get to to work I think this is going to be it for today. I'm gonna try to print out the stickers again and make the sticker sheets ready for the patron rewards and figure out which uh, uh, vegetables I want to turn into print um, to hopefully get a bit less frustrated. <laughs> I've had this printer now for like a month and a half and it's supposed to be a really really great printer but man I don't know. I'm still trying and I'm trying to learn how these things even work and sometimes it prints really well and then it's just horrible. So it's possible that the paper is bad but um, it's a bit difficult to believe that you only have to have very special paper to print anything decent. So I'm gonna leave it here for today and hopefully come back to tomorrow is Monday so I should technically finish the vlog today but I don't think I really did anything so I'm gonna do something more tomorrow and then I'm gonna cut everything and edit and it's gonna be ready for you on Wednesday. All right well <laughs> let's hope tomorrow will be better. Hi friends! 
So it's the next day. It's Monday about 4 in the afternoon. So I just finished my work day and I thought that to add a little bit more content this week because I really feel like I did nothing and just complained. <laughs> I'm gonna do another little uh, refurbishing project into my office and I'm gonna turn little stool chair thing into a mushroom stool. I got this idea a while ago and I think it's gonna look amazing. Let me show you the chair. I will try to show you. So it's like this brown, brown chair. And it's magical because it opens. There is a storage inside. And for now I am using it as uh, space to uh, uh, sort my waste. So I can have plastic and paper and it's kind of hidden away. But when I am drawing I can put my feet up. Or if someone comes to my office they can sit on it. And so on. But it's like this really ugly brown wood. And it's uh, just this... You know. Not so great. Not so great. So the plan is to, oh, also, well, I will come to it. So the plan is to paint it. I don't think I have white paint, so I'll probably use the light pink paint I have, because why not? It's, I mean, imaginary mushroom. And then the top cover, I'm going to cover with the red fabric with the white dots. I was thinking about it and then I thought mm, it's gonna be very flat, it's not gonna look like mushroom. And then I realized I have this cushion which I think I got at Ikea and it's really cute but uh, it's gonna just have to become the mushroom <laughs> because I want it to be a bit more puffy so I'm gonna put that mush that cushion on the top of the stool and then cover it all with fabric so the top is a bit bigger and a bit more mushroomy looking so it's gonna look like Amanita uh, let me show you there kind of like that but the bottom will be uh, pink and then we will have the red uh, hat with white dots. Yeah, so I'm going to paint the bottom first because that has to dry. And meanwhile it's drying, I'm going to prepare the top. I have this red fabric I bought last year to make a dress, which I never finished. But this is kind of the leftover. It's just a very regular cotton. So I'm not sure how long is it going to last. Ideally, I would use thicker cotton fabric which is made for furniture but since this is gonna be more decorative I think it should be fine and then I have this very thin white uh, iron on heat transfer foil uh, I could paint the white dots on it but I also really want to test the foil um, because the one I got, got now is very very thin so it's like supposed to melt into the fabric which could be great for future products so I'm going to cut dots from that uh, foil and then I will iron it on the material and once the bottom is painted I will I have this staple machine and I will just staple the fabric from the bottom but you will see everything I'm not sure yet what I'll do with the feet I think ideally in the future but I don't have the material now I'm gonna buy or figure out taller feet it could be just some kind of key, I don't know, I'll figure it out. Because the chair, the stool is little, maybe this much lower than the actual chair would be. So if you would want to use it as a chair, it's a bit too low. Uh, so that would be really nice improvement. So maybe like, the next step will be to figure out the legs. Because now it has these really um, weird little legs here. And it could be that I could just cut them away and add the uh, taller legs uh, instead. But that's not gonna happen today. So I'm going to go outside now and I'm going to paint. I also think I have a primer. So I might, I will sand it a little bit as always because if you just sand it slightly, it kind of cleans it up, but it also makes the surface a little less rough. So the paint sticks much easier to the surface. And then I will use the primer, which again is type of paint which helps you to stick the actual paint on the top of and since it's very dark and I'm gonna go to very light the primer will also help me to not have to use that much of the actual nice paint so I will go out now um, sand it 
prime it, wait for it to dry and meanwhile we go back to the studio and we will prepare the fabric. So it's really really hot outside but at least it got a bit cloudy now so it's not going to be so awful to work outside. So let's go! I'm really excited for the result and I'm hoping it will look something like this. And uh, let's hope for that result. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying anymore, I talk too much, let's go and work now. I realized that I can actually detach the top so while it, I don't know why did I think about it so while the bottom is drying we can work on the top and actually finish it so as you can see here it's kind of a similar way that, that the fabric is just nailed to the bottom how beautiful is this right uh, but I'm not gonna remove it because I'm too lazy and I don't care and I think it's gonna add a little bit to the puffiness so what I'm gonna do is going to have the lid like this and then the cushion on the top so we get a bit more mushroom shape and then we put the fabric all around it and staple it like that from the bottom. So what we are gonna do now is to decide the size of the dots. I have some dot stickers actually here so we can... where is my brush? So here's the ruler. So this dot is three centimeters. I think that's actually a good size. <laughs> I think bigger would be weird and I mean and if you imagine this size with these dots I think that's quite ideal actually or maybe a little bigger. Let's see if I have something else. So this smiley face is all the way to the four and a half. Or maybe that's better actually. I think that's better. Four and a half, maybe something. So maybe four. So it's something in between those two. So I'm very lazy. So I'm gonna just uh, cut the dots on the cutting machine. 
and then we will iron them on the fabric first and then put the fabric around. So I'm going to go and ask my lovely cutting machine to cut the dots for me and then I will take you down to the table. I don't have a heat press but you actually don't need it um, if you're not doing something very complicated uh, or something you want I mean I'm not selling it but I think even if you would want to sell it it's still okay because many uh, heat press what is it called yeah heat press foils uh, are just enough to press with the iron because they need quite a low temperature to iron on you just have to kind of go over a little bit I have actually I was helping my friends with the project and I was making these reflex vests for them and you can see that the the vinyl is like completely stuck to the to the fabric even though this is kind of silly polyester vest so um yeah so i'm gonna cut the dots take you down and we will iron it together to the fabric and then we will staple it and then the top will be finished already which is super exciting and then once i paint the leg i might actually get some kind of what is it called in english mm. I can't remember. You know this kind of a transparent uh, curtain-esque material you can make this uh, big uh, ballet skirts out of it. I, I have I've lost the word. I think I might buy a little bit of that in pink. Uh, I know it's very unsustainable, super plasticky, but I think 10 centimeters if I use it all up it's not gonna really kill anyone. And I'm gonna have it for a long time and then I'm gonna I think make a little skirt on the leg you know because the Amanita mushroom usually has this little skirt and I think that could be really cute on the chair as well so it's gonna be red very light pink and this light pink skirt so stop talking Barb let's go working <laughs> Okay friends, I tried to set up my tripod with my real camera, but the whole thing collapsed and hit me in my head really hard. So I'm filming on my phone, so sorry for worse sound and quality, but this is what it is. I like my head. <laughs> so uh, I printed out or cut out the circles on my sticker machine. It's always a learning curve when you are using the new machine or new material for the first time because there's so many different depths and forces and speeds you can set up and I think we did quite okay. So uh, this is sort of the, the, so you will iron it on from the other side over this paper. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut them into little pieces so we can position them separately on the fabric and I don't have an ironing board so I just put the several times folded towel on my table and I have this miniature iron I bought in our like local Norwegian store because I haven't ironed my clothes for years but suddenly the need occurred when I started to sew and do this stuff so this miniature iron was like uh, I don't know 15 euros maybe and it works really well and you can also fold the handle and bring it with you if you travel so uh, it's quite handy and uh, so this is it I'm gonna just cut it really quick maybe this is enough for now and um, I'll put them on the side here so we can spread the fabric and this is very new to me this uh, uh, iron on vinyl so I, i'm really just learning so we are learning together and we know that the the, the, the shape of the chair is a circle so it's gonna be somewhere here i guess but i will just try to iron one on the corner to somewhere here first to see what happens i usually just in case, take a small piece of fabric and iron it over it. And then I just kind of press for a few seconds. This one is supposed to be really easy because it's very thin and soft. And then, you know, I'm just kind of winging it. This one is a hot peel. So you peel it off when it's finished. And then what I did before is I just iron it one more. 
one, yeah, once more <laughs> without the foil. And it's kind of supposed to be stretchy and soft and you know, I think it, I mean for the chair it works well, it's stretchy, it looks okay, so <laughs> I'm just gonna go for it. And I'm going to now iron the dots on the rest of the fabric and I will come back to you once that's done. Oh, one more thing. I think I will just put it here and um, try to see the size. So I will, I need the little extra on the side for stapling. So I will maybe leave like this much. And then I have this uh, white pa pencil. So I will just uh, mark the shape on the fabric to know where it goes just kind of like that um but i will also iron some of them on the side because i think it's gonna be cute with these half dots so it's not like too perfect okay now i'm gonna just go ahead and place the dots and iron them and come back to you guys okay so this is how it looks like you can see that it's like completely um, yeah irons to the fabric and this is the this is the whole circle I don't know if you can oh, if you can see it right now so the circle is kind of here so what I'm going to do now I'm gonna cut it out with a little bit of the outside and then we are gonna staple it to the top exciting Okay, so we have the circle Oop. and now we are going to staple it to the bottom. So we turn it upside down, we have the bottom here and then as you can see this goes like that, like that, like that. And then what we need to do is to let's see, put it in the middle preferably. And then we will want to make little fo uh, folds. So let me just get the focus here. So you have the fabric like this, but if you just, you know, so you can make a little fold here like that. And then you staple it here. Over the fold, because then it's going to be nice and neat over there. Um, I have not really done this before, I know this in theory, so I will just try and see what happens. And this is the staple machine, um, be careful with them, they are usually quite uh, powerful and you don't want to staple on your fingers, so fingers away. And there we go. So the first piece of the fabric is connected. And now I will just continue. The, the, the gun or the staple machine is very loud, as you might have heard. So I think I will just do this quickly and come back to you once it's done. And then we will have to deal with this part, uh, with the, with whatever that is called, hinge. That's what it's called, hinge. So, because we really want to make it nice and clean, but then the hinge so I think what I'll do I will just fold it here and kind of staple it here but I will deal with it later I will just start it somewhere else so I'll just continue in the circle and when we get to the other side it's good to make sure that you are kind of oh my god I forgot about the cushion no now it's not gonna fit maybe oh my god let's let's just see I'm such an idiot. Um, yeah, so I will just take this out. How I got so excited, guys, that I forgot about the cushion. And I think now the fabric is too small, so we will have to do everything over again. Yeah, it's definitely too small. So, <laughs> mm. So I'm going to just do the fabric one more time and uh, you know my ADHD brain just uh, yeah 
So I will do this one more time and then I will make it bigger and I will come back to you once it's all stapled to the bottom. Uh, anyway, we learn and I think I will use this one anyway and I can make a, a small cushion or something so it won't go to waste. Luckily we have enough of all the material. Nerves? I'm not sure but let's just keep going. Okay, so we learned from our mistakes, made it twice as big and now I'm gonna staple it again. I had to take off my t-shirt because it's it's just too hot and um, now you can see that even with the cushion the fabric should be big enough to cover the whole thing. Yeah, it's good enough on all sides and I think I'm going to sort of tighten it up a bit because we want the edges to be a bit more, you know, mushroomy. So I will, I will tighten the fabric. I will leave it the size for now, just in case. And then I will cut the residue. Is that the word? Uh, once I'm finished. So I will just start probably Maybe I can actually start here where the hinge is because then I can already think, okay, I will just have to fold it like that, I think. Mm. Uh, no, I don't want to deal with it now. <laughs> Let's start here. Let's make this kind of in the... Oh, I was also thinking actually, I'm gonna remove this button here because i mean it's really cute button which i can use on something else but i think it's gonna have a bit more puffy shape it isn't it's not because it's sewed in so what am i going to do is i have this other fabric here it's just like little bit bits so maybe i can add a bit of the fabric here to like prop it i don't think it's gonna really matter but it would be nice if there is like a you know so i'm gonna go around the house and see what else i can stuff in that chair i'll be right back i really apologize i can't find any other uh, sports bra this one is like 100 years old has a paint stays on it but i have to have my window open so the sound is not crazy because the seagulls are screaming and the boats are making noises and it's just like 100 degrees so so we have this cushion and I, I, I want it to be a little more poop so I uh, have this really cheap uh, IKEA inner cushion so I think I'm just gonna cut a bit of that cushion and just prop it up there and just tighten it all up with the, the fabric and hope that's going to work. I also just found out that I had the wrong setting on my camera the whole time. So the colors will be probably absolutely disgusting. <laughs> but uh, I, I mean, I can't really take back time and refilm it because the things are already done. So you will have to just uh, survive. Okay, so I am going to take you down. To see what I'm doing so I'm going to let's see I think I will just open up this uh, cushion baggy yeah it's quite old so like all the filling got squished together which is great because we can just cut like a little donut out of it You see, this is the thing about recycling or refurbishing things because it's like, oh, I saved it from the landfill. But then sometimes you spend more money and material on fixing it than it would actually, you know. Anyway, yeah, so this is quite a lot, but I think it's going to make the chair really cute. So let's just try and see. So we'd have to put it the other way so like this um, 
in the middle of the fabric and then the wood is going on the top like this yeah. there and then if I just hold it and turn it around to show you guys let's see <laughs> Ta -da! you see what I mean it makes this little cute top and <laughs> Oh my god, this is so cute. I absolutely love it. Okay, this is gonna work. So I'm gonna get stamping. Is it stamp stampling? I don't know. I'm gonna get going and staple, stapling, staple the fabric to the top so we can see the result because I'm already so excited and this time I think it's gonna work. Okay. Just open the window.
Is it perfect? No. Is it cute? Hell yeah. Ta-da! <laughs> it's so cute. Like, look, here you can see. But the pillow under is a bit bumpy, okay? But uh, well, so now it's sort of connected here and there. So what I'm going to do now is to go and tighten it and staple it even more so the so out of breath so excited I can't breathe um so it's uh, really stapled properly around the whole thing and then we are done I think it looks like thousand percent cute I'm so happy with it and the shape is kind of funny mushroomy and then uh, once this is done I will run out and paint the, uh, the bottom pink because I think it's gonna rain very soon so we want to have this done today so let me just finish stapling I don't think you have to see that so I'll be back when I'm painting then we will hopefully it will dry quickly we can screw this together and take some cute picture of the mushroom in the grass or something okay too excited <laughs> chair dried and I assembled the top to it and it's so cute I, I don't know I don't know if you are ready for it because it's so cute and now I don't know if I want to put the little pink skirt on it or if I want to draw eyes to it because it looks a bit like the mushroom from uh, Super Mario or like this little Japanese cute kawaii yeah, the camera just turned off for some reason. Anyway, so I don't know if to put the skirt on it or the eyes. So I will show you the result and let me know in the comments what you think. And that's what I'm going to do for the next vlog. So we decide together because I think both could look incredibly cute. So, you ready? Ta-da! Isn't that the cutest thing you have seen today? Oh my god, I love it so much. I'm so happy I'm vlogging, guys, because I've been meaning to do this for months, but I just didn't really get to it. And now I had to because like, mm, what am I gonna put in the vlog? Yeah, let's do the chair. And I'm so happy I have you to force me to do things I wanna do, but won't do. But look at that. Look at that little gal my little mushroom chair. So it opens up like this. Oh, it's too far away, but uh, like that. And I'm gonna split it in the middle with the cardboard so I can have paper waste and the plastic waste in there. And I, I'm quite sure this is like the cutest waste sorting solution in existence. I don't know what you think. But let me know what you think. Should we put just eyes on it? Or should we put a little skirt around? What do you think would be better option? Let me know in the comments so we can decide together. <laughs> but I absolutely love it and I'm so happy I did this. It's just the best thing I've ever done, probably. <laughs> 
Okay friends, so I think I'm gonna end the vlog here. I hope you enjoyed this week's vlog. I'm not sure if I will be able to vlog next week because we are uh, going to our friend's uh, cottage on the weekend, but I will try to film at least something so you will have something nice to watch next uh, Wednesday. And thank you so much if you made it so far. I really, really appreciate that you are here and that I can share my process with you. It really, really helps me to get things done because with my personality and overthinking and perfectionism and whatnot, I don't know what else is happening in there in my head. Sometimes I just suck kind of self-sabotage myself and don't do things I want to do but now because I promise you I'll do it or I just want to have something exciting for you I'll do it and that's just fabulous <laughs> like this chair it's gonna make me happy for like a whole week at least and every time I look at it and I wouldn't uh, manage without you so thank you so much if you enjoyed this video please consider subscribing or giving me a like it really helps me to know that you like what I do or don't and as I said let me know in the comment eyes or skirt and have a lovely week and I will see you next Wednesday <laughs> bye